Hey gang, I uh, got a tutorial uh, today. Yeah, some of you have asked me to do um, after my, I think my last haul video from BNA Model World. Um, yeah, this is where I got these from. But yeah, I have been asked to do a tutorial on these. Um, <clears throat> so here we go. What we have here are the new uh, AK Interactive True Metals. Uh, they're buffable wax paint. Value for money. I mean, I get these for $11 a piece and when you thin this stuff out, you need so little of it. Um, it's equivalent, okay, we'll put it this way. If I was to thin this thing right out to add thinner and everything, you'd be getting close to 100 mils um, of, of buffable airbrush paint or even paintable, like just brushable paint, I'm guessing. Um, it's you, you don't need much of this at all. It's just one little squirt and just... You add a bit of um, white spirit or enamel thinners to it, and it, yeah, it's just crazy. Like it's um, really, really nice, guys. But yeah, so we're gonna do a uh, tutorial. What we're gonna use today is I'm just gonna use the gun metal uh, for this demonstration. But pretty much they all behave the same way. Um, I don't have the gold, the copper, the bronze. Um, I'll probably eventually get those later on, but. Just for the time being, um, I've got a lot of the metal work, so I do a lot of um, steel chipping and stuff like that, uh, which is why I got these. So we'll put these to the side. So we're going to work with this um, gun metal uh, true, tube of true metal here. So I'll put this to the side, and what I'm going to demonstrate this on, I've just got an old busted up old um, Tamiya Jeep that I started building and just lost complete interest, and, and every now and then just for for laughs, I just yeah, throw it around on the bench and things break off and so she's pretty much now a test bed for products and primers um, and all these all these have been primed with <coughs> excuse me um, all clad to uh, black primer micro filler and these are just some really old uh, Warhammer space they've got floating around as well I got these off eBay years ago just I was going to build my army up and yeah, so they're just more now for testing things, and so you might see a lot of these now because the actual army man that I got is actually covered in a fair bit of stuff. So, but we'll start using these, and these will be the test bed, especially all you Warhammer guys out there. You're gonna see how this stuff works on there as well, so it's gonna be good for you. And all we're gonna do is mine the black, um, the white if it does. But I've just got a old painting tray, and it's just some um, aluminium foil just chucked on there, just to protect. So I don't have to clean it so when it gets dirty. I just basically pull it off and throw it away in the bin. So um, what we're going to do is, I'll try and set this up more, we're going to get a lot of glare no matter what, so just bear with me for the next couple of minutes. Um, so open this up, and all we're going to use for this one, just I've got um, just general uh, enamel thinners that I bought from the automated store, but I've just got it... Um, in an old humble enamel thinner, so yes, yeah, this, this ain't humble enamels, but it does work. I have tried it, so um, yeah, so that's it there. Yeah, so, what we're going to do some of these you got to be careful too because when I've opened these up, there's a lot of like the liquid and the medium separated. So, just give so basically what you see there, you can see there, like it's it's not much at all, it's just sticking out of the tube, and that's pretty much all we need, guys. So, we're just going to go bloop, like that. Didn't have to squeeze the tube on nothing, and then, and what I normally use is an old. Uh, don't go using acrylic brushes with these. Just I've got just an old. You can see I've been using this a fair bit. It's just an old, um, old dinged up enamel brush that I got. So give us the wet it up a bit, and then we're just going to slowly apply the enamel, th um, the, the enamel thinners in here. You can go quite thin actually. So. And what we're going to do is, I'm just going to get a thin brush. Just going to give it a stir. And you see that's slowly. Um, yeah, and don't worry if it dries up again, you just add more thinners and it becomes live again, it becomes a live product. So don't worry about that, about the paint drying out. So just having a quick test. And we'll probably add a little bit more thinner to it, it's not going to hurt it. Okay. And that makes it really hard too because it is on a silver surface or metallic surface. So get my arm out of the way. And we'll put that 
that to the side. And then when you're painting this, just basically treat it like you're using a thin, um, a thin acrylic paint. That's the consistency that I've gotten it to. So when you do thin your paint, paints out for, um, for brush painting, that's what you're kind of aiming for. I've just got a little plastic eyedropper thing, and I'm just going to put a bit of thinners just in here because we are going to need it. Okay, so put that away. Basically, when I need to wet my brush up, I'm just going to dip it in there and then basically reapply anything like that. Okay, so just leave this to the side up here, make some space, I'll leave it just in shot so you can see it. Right. Okay, so what you want to do exactly you would on your on your black base just paint the shoulder pads I might bring the camera in a bit more okay. so what you want to do is you just want to paint the trimming of the shoulder pad as you normally would and I do recommend if you've already got um, if you've already painted your miniature, you've already got the base color on there um, I do recommend sealing it before you um, put this on. Depends if you're going to buff it though. If you're going to buff it, I do recommend sealing it. But if you're not, you're just going to brush it on just for a nice metallic paint. Then um, yeah, there's no need to worry about that. So I'm just going to do one shoulder pad. So, so, and so this is really not. I'm trying not. I'm um, trying to be fairly neat, but what I'm demonstrating here is how this true metal works, not how to paint a space marine. So, um, so that's a shoulder pad, and also. Just going to paint it. I think it's a what is it? A flamer, I think. So I'm just going to paint it. I'm not going to worry about too much about being neat and so you can see it goes on really, really thin. But yeah, it's it's basically one one coat coverage. Where you put one coat on and that's it. Um, very very thin so every time I'm putting the brush back in the palette I'm just dipping it re, um, re wetting the brush every couple of times probably every second time maybe okay so just gonna finish it off from the deer. And these do take it at acrylic washes quite easily as well, so don't uh, worry if you're thinking of if uh, acrylic washes are compatible with this. The answer is yes. But before you start buffing these, I do recommend just giving just half an hour to dry. Like it does dry quite quick, but you want to make sure that it is completely dry um, when you buff it, otherwise you'll start taking the paint off. Especially if you're putting it on thin too, because the paint's not obviously not very thick on here. And then you can see now that you know there's hardly any loss of detail. So that's that one. Uh, you can airbrush this as well. It's um very very airbrushable paint. Same thing. You just thin it out with enamel, um, enamel thinners or white spirits. 
and spray it to spray the low pressure and make sure um, you have all your safety gear, your respirator and cover any models that you don't want metallic because this stuff does go everywhere and protect your surface of your bench because if you don't and you put your arms up later you'll have shiny wrists and things like that alright so that's that one done so we'll put that to the side so you can see well actually I'll bring it back out you can see that it's actually very easily you can control it quite easily and it um it doesn't run everywhere it's it it goes down really nice you can see that you know even on the flame here um, you know it's there's no loss of detail whatsoever it's every single bit of detail is still there and, um, I'm just going to give this brush a little clean out for a second I'm just going to grab some more of this. Give it time to squirt. And then I'm just going to use the water, uh, the um, things that I put in that other tray. And I'm just going to mix it up because it doesn't really matter. You want it nice and thin. And you actually thin stuff a lot before you start noticing that it's you know, it's too thin. Because there's just so much pigment in this stuff, it's just crazy. Which is why you don't need much of it. And so all we're gonna do with this one is Probably it's still a little bit thick. Yeah, you can see that this paint is very thin, and I'm still saying it's thick. All right, so, All right, so take it off. Got way too much paint on the brush. I should get some more thinner on this um, on this palette here. Whoa. That's better. All right. So all we're gonna do is you can see how smooth this stuff is. Yeah. Now that's better. You see how before the detail starts to clog, that's when you know it's too thick. But if it is too thick, just put your brush in some thinner. Brush back over it and spread it out some more. Can you watch how far this brush goes a long way? There's only one dip in the thinner. So you do get a lot in the brush. So it does go a long way, just keep spreading. You know, where a normal acrylic paint wouldn't do this. Okay, so you can see how fast I'm applying this and how flat this still is. So um, on a big surface, yeah, airbrush it just because it's easier. But for a miniature, you know, you don't really need to airbrush this miniature because I mean, you see how flat it's going on. It's you're almost getting an airbrush finish on it because it is so thin. So we're gonna do the whole thing here. Just keep taking up the paint. And if you got a um, like I wouldn't recommend when you're sealing this stuff, um. I wouldn't go using just your normal uh, clear coats. Um, if you got like a, a metalizer sealer, um, the one I use is the Testers um, Model Master uh, metalizer sealer. I think it's designed for their, their like their buffable paints, and they got metalizers as well, so it's designed for that. And it does work, and it does. It's probably um, doesn't do it any harm to use it, so and I haven't had any dramas with it. I don't really lose too much reflectiveness, like reflective shine out of it. So, and if you do have some of that on your shelf, it's you can use that. But I couldn't tell you about anything else because that's all I have. So, 
I mean, but if you do have something else and you do have it, leave a comment down below, guys, because I'm sure some of the guys that are watching this video would, would love to, like, hear from you and, and hear your thoughts on how it works. So, just quickly go over there, like so. So you can see how quick it does not take long to put on at all. But then there you go, that's the finish you get out of it on a miniature. Like it's okay, this gun metal to keep in mind it too, so it's um it goes on there quite nice. So putting the side dry. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna see if we can dry brush this stuff. So we can get a paper tear up, take as much off as we can. That's probably too much still. And just flick it around. So as you would dry brushing. Okay. So take more off. Just the edges. Go around here like it's scraped on the bottom. Use the edge of your brush and get the very edge of your detail. Or if you want, send it out some more and just will fill that area in. You see how quick it dries, so it does get a bit thick and starts to struggle. So just put your brush back in the um, Back in the thinners and move around again. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Like that. Um, okay, so that's pretty pretty much what you can do with it. I mean, airbrushing it is it's no different from spraying like acrylic paints, just thin it out. But make sure you mix it up in a little cup or something. I don't recommend putting this egg, uh, the, the wax straight into your cup because you will block it up. Mix it up in a little separate container, a disposable container or something. Or if you've got a, you know, just some little glass jar that you've got, like a shot glass on something, you've got to mix it up. But use that. Um, just whatever you got. But just make sure you mix it up separately before you put it in your cup. Um, and so keep that in mind as well, guys. Because you have a big chunk of wax go through in there, it's going to be pretty hard to clean out. All right, so we're just going to go in there like that. All right. So, so what we've done, just a bit of dry brushing. Um, man, like you need edge highlight with it. Chips. I mean, you can definitely do chips and stuff with it. You know, like just same way as you would with the normal acrylic paint or if you use oils um, you know, and then you just use a bit of thinner um, clean thinner this won't work because I've got a dirty palette of thinner there but yeah, yeah you just keep bleeding, stre streaking it out um, but obviously it's not going to work with this because I've got a dirty brush or dirty pile of thinners here so okay I really like wash. Let's see how we can get this into a wash type thing. Not really going to work, but yeah, you get it thin enough, and you can peel your action will go. Yeah, so you can still get it in there. I don't know if you can pick that up. Um, see if we can do it somewhere else so you can see it. So we go on the back where it's just completely black, and this is just very thin down. This is just the dirty thinnest pile. Imagine a gloss, a black gloss. It would just run, but with this matte, it's um, it's just um. Okay, so we'll see all the different things you can do with it. So we'll let all this dry. We'll give it about half an hour or so, and then we'll come back and then I'll show you what it looks like when you buff this stuff up. Okay, so back in a second, guys. And we're back, guys. Yeah, so it's had half an hour, maybe a bit more to dry, and it has dried quite well. So you can see, you rub with your finger, nothing comes off at this stage. So we definitely know it's dry. So what we're going to do now? You can either use a paper towel or a um, Q-tip, 
but just start with a cotton um, paper towel. Like I didn't remove any of the mold lines or anything, so yeah, this is just to show how it works. So if I can, hopefully the camera picks it up. Okay, you see, I will do one side, so we'll leave this side unpolished just for the time being, if I can sort of get that light glare off it. But, um, okay, so hopefully, alright, so we'll just give it a polish. Straight away, one wipe, you can see it's difference already. So, I mean, if you want, you can actually put the model on the paper towel and just roll it. So, give it a really good buff. You should be careful not to get too hot because it is quite thin. So, so you can see that it is going that dark gunmetal colour on your shoulder pads. Like you'll get like a real polished stage and then it'll, then it'll start turning dark. So, so I'm just using the edge here. You see how like it it also smooths it out. So you can feel if you rub your finger on the surface that hasn't been buffed, and you rub, rub, rub your finger on the surface that has been buffed, it you can feel a huge difference that it is becoming smooth. Okay. Well, we'll leave this one unbuffed and we'll polish this one. There you go. How's that sound, guys? Might make it easy to look at. Okay. If it gets it nooks and crannies or anything like that, basically you just get your Q tip and rub away. But with a Q tip, it normally takes a bit more work to get it to that shine. Like things like in, your, in the boots and that, you can just roll it up so it's round and just lightly buff. You don't want to like hammer it so you're rubbing the paint away. And just rub the side of his head. So you see the shine is working. Okay, so don't know if the camera picks it up. So you look at that shoulder pad. I'll get this out of the way. So you look at that shoulder pad. That's the one that we haven't done, and this is the one that we have done. You can see the dramatic difference on his legs on the back here compared to this one. Well, there you go. The camera picks it up well there. So you can see the difference. Okay. So you can, if you really want to, um, I mean, you can keep going and going and going. That's just to show how it polishes it up. And the same thing on his weapon. And then you put a wash in there. And then um, once you've polished it, and that makes all the detail even pop out even more. But then you'll obviously seal it first, and then give it a wash. So we're just gonna polish the top. Q-tip here. Buff. Okay, so you can see that it is buffing up quite nicely there as well. Alright, so So just on your shoulder pads. You really want that metal, bare metal look. And just change. 
once it starts getting all fluffy and fray, you just turn it over and use a nice fresh part of the Q-tip. Oops. So if you guys out there are paying a Necron army, um, yeah, you're going to have really nice, you're going to have a really nice looking army if you use true metals on your Necron army. Okay, so, alright, so I've done the shoulder pad, you can see how, yeah, you can just see how bright that is. It's just really, really bright. Alright, so, and then on the side of the car, Jeep here as well. It's going to rub it. So you're going to see a big difference where we didn't polish it and where we did. Okay, so. Yeah, that light is just it's just so reflective which makes the camera just finds it really hard to um, focus down on it. And even where you've just edged like chipped and stuff, you can rub your um you know, just rub the entire lot. Just rub. Camera doesn't really pick it up too well, but um, looking at it from here, it's just a big difference between like inside the recesses and on the edge on, on the edges of the detail and the raised detail here. You can really see a huge difference, and that's and I didn't even really put a lot on here, guys. It's it's actually quite a thin thin down mix of it. Um, basically just wanted to experiment as well because I haven't really played with this stuff too much myself so this is more like a trial as well to see what it can and can't do but even with a very thin down application with thinners that's still very translucent I guess you could say you can still see the black primer underneath it um, still polishes up quite nice I mean obviously it's not going to be as bright as if you put on a little bit thicker but um, it does actually work so well there you go guys there's a tutorial on how basically to thin and but this is a brush painting there's um, there are other tutorials on airbrush I think there's a couple of guys out there who've got airbrushes um, tutorials on these on the AK True Metal, so yeah, check them out. But this was just a brush version of it because it's mainly how I'm going to use it. So, um, so there you go, AK True Metal tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later. Bye bye.